Quirk might serve as a compendium of the entire oral, oral law, including the ordinances, customs, and decrees instituted from the days of our teacher Moses till the compilation of the Talmud, as expounded for us by the Gedeonim in all the works composed by them since the completion of the Talmud. Hence, stop there. Have... Stop there. Wow. <laughs> He's saying, I did this to replace the Talmud. That's what he did. He wants people to be able to read the Torah and read the Mishnah Torah, and that's all you need because things are in such a bad way, and most people don't have the time or the ability to go through all the complicated treatises, not just of the Gemara, but also of the Ga'onim and everything like that, in order to come to a conclusion as to how they're supposed to live their life according to uh, the Jewish tradition. He says things are a mess, and people there aren't enough people to be able to do this. So that's why I did this. Yes, Brian? Is, that, is this as extraordinary as it sounds? I mean, we go over to Europe, and we don't have artists saying I until the Renaissance. We don't have philosophers saying I until Descartes in the 1600s. Does this stand apart from the trend of history? Yes, yes, I, I, Moses, the son of Maimon of Sephardi. I am doing this. This is, this is quite extraordinary. And the claims that he's making that he is going to save Judaism, so to speak. And it shows his courage to do so. My, no ego. Say what? No one ego. Might say arrogance rather than courage. You know what's interesting? He was a combination of someone who was extremely humble in some ways. He admitted the fact that in his year, younger years he had a terrible temper. And he'd never suffer fools gladly. But he also was someone who knew how to control himself. But he also was very self-confident of his knowledge and its abilities. And he was never going to back down from that. You know, when, when we were reading this, I said, how would you feel about the Pew study that just came out? <laughs> about how Jews are not yeah. really... Yeah. Well, you know... What would he write, you know, what would he write uh, with that in mind? Who knows? I mean, we live in a very different world, right? Yes. Okay. Um, read, read the last sentence then. Hence, I have entitled this work Mishnah Torah, Repetition of the Law, for the reason that a person who first reads the written law and then this compilation will know from it the whole of the oral law without having mm -hmm. occasion to consult any other book between them. There it is. Excellent. Okay? And then he talks about how he um, arranges everything. Okay? And uh, he then talks about the 613 mitzvot. And um, then what he does is um, talk about these, what these mitzvot are, okay? Um, what's interesting is, is then he actually, at the end of his introduction, lists all of the 613 mitzvot, positive and negative. Again, in the order as found in the Mishnah Torah, not the order they're found in the Torah, okay? And he, um, uh, and then he t talks about how, you know, I seem to, uh, he ends up by saying there are 14 books. So at the end of the introduction, if you actually look in the original, you'll see at the end all of the lists of the 613, which precedes it. But again, our translator left out the section where he shows you how the true Talmudic tradition comes from Rav Ashi down through the Gaonim to the Spanish Jewish Talmudic authorities to him. In other words, he is, these are all his, he's in effect saying, these are all my sources. Right? But I am in this, I'm the part of this legitimate tradition to do this. Okay. When you 